This is a question that many people have today. Is God's Ten Commandments law, Ten Commandment law still binding? Are Christians supposed to keep it? I'm going to try to answer that question today with some text from the Word of God. Well, first of all, let's look at the law of God and let's see what it says. If you look at Exodus chapter 20, beginning with verse 1, it, it tells us what God law, God's law really is. God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor, covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor as manservant, nor as maidservant, nor as ox, nor as ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Now that's the Ten Commandments. And I think I would first ask the question is in terms of whether or not it is still binding today, whether or not Christians should keep it, is this way. I would first ask, is there anything wrong with the law? For everything that I just read, it sounds to me like I, we're giving glory to God in the first four commandments, and we're showing deference to our fellow man. We're honoring our mother and father in the fifth commandment, and then the sixth through the tenth, we are showing respect to our fellow man. Now, personally, I don't see anything that should say that should change at any time in history. In fact, the law of the Lord is very, very important to God. In fact, he himself instructed Moses when he was telling him in Exodus chapter 25 to put the law that he was going to give him in the ark. Now, we'll all remember that the ark, the ark of the Testament, was very, very important in the life of Israel. They had what's called a sanctuary. It had three apartments, uh, uh, three, three sections, and in the, uh, the, what well, the apartment called the most holy place, um, this is where the ark would reside, the most holy place. And the Lord told Moses to put the Ten Commandments in the ark. I'm going to read it to you now in Exodus 25, 21 and 22. It's, this is his command. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee, the very important. And there I will meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony, of all things which I give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. And so the Lord commanded Moses, put the Ten Commandments in the ark. Now, this is how the ark gets the name the Ark of the Testimony, or the Ark of the Testament. When you see that word of, it means possession. 
It's what the ark possesses, what's inside of it. So without the Ten Commandments, it would just be an ark. But with the Ten Commandments, it becomes the ark of his testimony. And then, true to form, the Lord gave Moses the Ten Commandments, uh, which he himself wrote with his finger. According to Exodus chapter 31, verse 18, it says this, And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. I think most of us know that the Ten Commandments were written on two tables of stone. It is the only thing in the Word of God that was not written by man. This was written by God himself. I think that would, would, would indicate how important the law of God is to God. And so, I want you to think about uh, a, a few things about the law of God. Just think about a few things here. Um, what really is the law about? Okay, I'm going to read 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So let's do one more time. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. The law is there to point out infractions, things that separate man from God merely because of disobedience, things that, if kept, pleases God, but if broken, displeases God. The law is there just to be a marker, to show us the difference between right and wrong, what God likes and what God does not like, if violated. In fact, in Romans chapter 4, verse 15, the Bible says this, because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. So someone said, well, do we need to keep the law? Should Christians keep the law? Well, the Bible says, if there's no law, there's no transgression. Transgression is another word for sin. So if there is no law, there is no sin. I want you to think about this for a moment. I'll give you two examples. On the street, as you ride through, you will see periodically a speed limit posted, 40, 35. We get out on the highway, it'll be 55, 60, 65, 70 in some cases. That's a marker to tell you if you're okay, you're within the law, and therefore a law-abiding citizen. But when you go above it, you are breaking the law at that point. Now, I'll give you another example. If you're out on the Autobahn uh, in Germany, they say there is no speed limit, so you can go as fast as you want and you'll never be breaking the law. Okay, well, that might work for the Autobahn, but just think if the local street uh, had no posted speed limit, what would that do? People may have a thrill riding down the street at warp speed, but the fact is, it would be very, very dangerous. So the law also keeps order and allows for smooth functioning. There was a question, and we remember what we're answering here. We're answering whether or not the law is still in effect and if it should be kept today. Uh, there was a situation in Matthew chapter 19 of, of a young man that we call the rich young ruler. Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 through 19. Let me read what happened. The Bible says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? 
And he said unto me, why callest thou me good? That's Jesus talking now. There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Now remember the question he asked was, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So when Jesus says, but if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Now the answer is, he's answering about eternal life. So there is some connection here between the keeping of God's law and eternal life. Now you might say, well, is that really the Ten Commandments it's referring to? Or just the commands of God in general? Well, look at the next verse. The Bible says, he saith unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear a false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now think for a moment. Those, those uh, laws that he is citing, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt commit no adultery, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. This certainly comes from the Ten Commandments. So Jesus is quoting the Ten Commandments, the same ones that we read uh, back in Exodus chapter 20. Now, let me just say this. The rich young ruler came to Jesus during his ministry. So this would have to be somewhere past 31 years into Jesus' life. And we know that he was here for 33 years on this earth. Anywhere from two, three or so years before he was to die on the cross, they had this encounter. So follow what I'm saying. Some people say that the law was done away with and nailed to the cross, but this is a young man. And if Jesus is about to end the keeping of the law, be, uh, uh, to do away with the Ten Commandments, why would he instruct this uh, young ruler whose whole life is ahead of him to keep something that's about to change in a short period of time? I think, brothers and sisters, the answer is because the law continues to be in effect even after the cross. And I hope to be able to show you that in just a moment. Jesus was talking to his disciples in and, and Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. And there he left some instructions for them before uh, shortly thereafter leaving. Now, this is after he has, he has been dead on the cross and then he's been resurrected. These are the words, and we, these are very famous words that we recite all the time. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So he told his disciples who are going to continue to carry on the work after he's gone back to his father, teach all nations. Teach them what? Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Now, brothers and sisters, Jesus himself also said, I and my father are one. Jesus followed the Ten Commandments when he came to this earth. In fact, he continued to uphold the law that was spoken all the way back in Exodus chapter 20, although I must say the law was in effect even before then. But I'm not going to go into that in this study. Jesus said this, and remember he said in Matthew 28, I just read, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Well, look at, look at what he says in John 14, verse 15. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. And so he's, 
he is saying to his disciples, go out and teach them to observe whatever I've commanded you. And so if he's saying to his disciples, if you love me, keep my commandments, his disciples are to go out and teach others who they are hoping to make disciples to keep the commandments of God. Well, got a few more to give you. Remember this lawyer in Matthew chapter 22 came up to Jesus trying to stump Jesus about the law. And in Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 to 40, he asked this question as a lawyer. He said this, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? He's referring to the Ten Commandments. Jesus said unto him, verse 37, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, some people have explained it that that means that Jesus instituted two new commandments. Well, first of all, the lawyer was referring back to the Ten Commandments. He says, which is the great commandment in the law? That's the Ten Commandments. What Jesus then began to do is give what we call a synopsis of the law. The first thing he said is, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. This is the first and great commandment. Now, the first four commandments of the Ten Commandments indicate love to God, right? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that's in heaven and earth, uh, uh, the heaven be uh, above or the earth beneath or the waters under the earth. Okay, don't make any graven image. F just follow me. Don't even make images of me. Follow me. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Okay, talking about not uh, uh, um, um, having worship to God that is meaningless. Um, calling on his name and not, not, not uh, meaning what you are saying when you call on his name. When you call on his name, he is worthy of honor and praise and reverence and respect. And then it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay, six days shalt, shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou know thy son, thy daughter, manservant, thy maidservant, thy cattle, thy stranger that's within thy gates. Why? For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So that fourth commandment again is talking about giving honor to God as our creator. And then when you get to the fifth commandment, um, honor thy father and thy mother, now showing respect to our parents. And then the rest of the commandments are showing deference to our fellow man. So the first four, respect to God. The last six, respect to our fellow man. And that's why Jesus said in verse 40, on these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. That means hang, another word for hang there is depend. The keeping of this law depends upon respecting God and respecting your fellow man. Now, in Ecclesiastes chapter, chapter um, 12, and I'm winding down for this question, but I just want to make sure that you got this really good. The question that we're asking here is, should a Christian still keep God's Ten Commandments? Are God's Ten Commandments still in effect? Got a few more verses to give you for you to get this. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14, notice this is the Old Testament. The Bible says this, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And we think about that, that's mankind. That goes beyond merely um, Christians. All 
human beings. All flesh is supposed to keep God's commandments. Then he tells us why in verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. God shall bring. That means in the future. Now remember, this is the Old Testament. I'm going to go now to the New Testament, James chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. It says this, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. What law is he talking about? For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. We would certainly agree that these are a part of the Ten Commandments he's quoting. Okay? And don't forget what we just read in the first verse. Okay? Because someone will say, well, he didn't read all, he didn't cite all the Ten Commandments. But what is what did he say in verse 10? Whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So even though in verse 11, he talked about adultery and killing, the fact is he could have cited any violation of any commandment. All right, so you keep this commandment over here, but not this one, any one of those 10. And according to verse 10, it is saying, violate one, you're violating all of them. So he doesn't have to cite all 10 for us to say the 10 commandments are still in effect based upon verse 10. But listen to this, verse 12. So speak ye and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty shall again. That's what we saw back in Ecclesiastes. Shall be judged. That's still future. So this is pointing towards a day of judgment, a day of judgment. Okay, in which the law is at the center of this. Well, in Revelation chapter 11, verses 18 and 19, now that time of judgment has come. Now, understand this. At the time that John the Revelator saw the judgment, he was launched into the future, not in his day and time, but he saw the day of judgment come. And listen to what he said. It's, it's, it says in verse 18, the nations were angry and thy wrath has come and the time of the dead that they should be judged. Remember Ecclesiastes 12, shall be judged. James 2, shall be judged. But now the time of judgment has arrived and it's for everybody. That thou shouldest give a reward unto thy servants, the prophets, to the saints, to them that fear thy name, small and great, and should it destroy them which destroy the earth. Read verse 18. That tells you everybody's to be judged. This is what we call the judgment. But look at verse 19. The temple of God, and the temple of God was open in heaven. Now, by the way, that word and the, to start that line, says, and the narrative continues. This is all related to verse 18. And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. There was lightnings and voices, thunders, and an earthquake and great hail. So listen to this. When judgment began, there we go. There's that ark again. The same ark of Exodus, Exodus chapter 25, in which the Lord said, put those Ten Commandments in the ark, the ones that I give you, Exodus 31, 18. Now when judgment begins, we see the ark of his testament, which means, what does it bear? Of his testament, it bears the Ten Commandments. And interestingly enough, when you see uh, there, there's an elemental reaction, you know, I find this fascinating. There were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. I would like you to go back and look at Exodus chapter 19, just before the Lord spoke the Ten Commandments. You will already see, as they were about to gather, to hear the Ten Commandments spoken by the voice of God, that there was an elemental reaction, which is the same as what you're reading here. It's just another, another way to confirm that this is God's Ten Commandments law, law, and it is still in effect. Well, let me just give you these last few. Somebody said, well, maybe the law was done away with and nailed to the cross. 
Well, let's hear the words of Jesus, because remember that Jesus is the one who went to the cross. He is the one that should tell us anything about the work that was done on the cross, the ramifications coming out of the cross. But listen to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, 17 to 19. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily, now verily means certainly, for an absolute certainty, I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Not one jot or one tittle. That means the language of the Ten, the Ten Commandments. Nothing will be altered. Commandment 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Nothing will change. It will stay intact until heaven and earth pass. So if you're looking at this video, um, and any time that you're looking at this video, it is a certainty that heaven and earth is still here. We're still here. And if we're still here, the law of God is still in effect. In fact, Jesus even said in verse 19, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in heaven. Well, I'm going to finish by telling you this, and I think this is so important. You know, David wrote a lot of songs, and we call them psalms. And he wrote a psalm, Psalms 19, 7 through 11, and he wrote it about the law. What I'm going to do now is show you how beautiful the law was to David in the Old Testament. Then I'm going to show you the last mention, basically, of the law in the New Testament, and I think you'll find they're one and the same. David said this, the law of the Lord is perfect. Now this is Psalm 19, 7 through 11. The law of the Lord is perfect. Nothing wrong with it. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. And then it says, More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. That's why he said, I delight to do your law. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. But then he says this in verse 11, Moreover by them, is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. So what does that mean? By them, in other words, if we don't follow them, we've been fairly warned, just like that speed limit illustration I gave. If we, we post it, it's there. If we follow it, there's a reward. If we don't follow it, we have been warned about violating it. Okay, but look at this part. Moreover by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. What is that reward? Revelation 22, 14 and 15. Revelation 22, 14 and 15. It says this, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. That's heaven. That city is the new Jerusalem. That city is heaven. If you look at Matthew, I'm sorry, Revelation 21, first four verses in there, you'll say what John saw, the holy city, new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. That city is the new Jerusalem. That's heaven. And the Bible says, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. But look at the next verse. The next verse says this, for without, that means outside of the city, outside of the gates, not in heaven, but out of heaven, are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters 
and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. If you examine those verses, you will see that that connects you back to the Ten Commandments. So the point is, commandment keepers are going into the kingdom. Commandment breakers will not be in the kingdom. And the question is, which will you be? Which will you be? Jesus says this in John 15, 14. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Jesus today wants to be our friend because he loves us and he wants us to follow him. He doesn't want us just to say, I love you. That's easy to say. But Jesus says, if you love me, if you really love me, keep my commandments. The commandments are still binding and they're to be kept by all mankind. When we accept Jesus, this is a part of accepting him. And my prayer is that we will follow God's Ten Commandments.